hello again race fans welcome to another installment of power hack uh, today we're going to look at the cars that we used for the two uh, videos with the addition of one uh, the point of this video is to actually show you how much amp draw these cars really are pulling uh, we talked about that um, and we made reference to that in the other videos and how that limits the the factory power packs or wall warts and then uh, using the uh, modified laptop power supply how much uh, more it'll push cars uh, we've got about eight cars here and let's look at them individually the new one in here is uh, a standard Mega G car um, probably three or four years old before they went to the can motor. This particular car is hopped up with uh, extra traction magnets, uh, Viper rear end set, super tires, O-ring front set. The second car, and we used this one in the power hack video, the newer Mega G Plus, this particular car modifications are the o-ring front set and a set of super tires on the rear other than that the magnets are standard the third car is a new Mega G uh, it's been hopped up with o-ring front set complete Viper rear end set and the stronger uh, Neo traction magnets Uh, here we've got a Viper car, the formula, I'm calling it Mega Plus or some whatever you want, you want to call it. It's, it's a higher ohm car that tries to mimic the speed of the, uh, the older Mega G's. It's not, not as fast as a uh, current 6 ohm car, a little more manageable for a home track. That's an all level 4 car, O-ring front set. Uh, all other Viper parts. This particular one is running a uh, an old uh, Aurora AFX hard body, and I believe this one is also set up in high downforce. A similar setup. This car is set up in low downforce, running an Indy body. We have a Lifelike T car. Uh, the only modification on it is double flange rear hubs and firm super tires B. Then we go to a standard level 4 Viper car with a 6 ohm motor, uh, 725 gear set, and then we have a 2.8 ohm car, level 10 magnets. So what we'll do is we will turn the track power supply on and we will put the camera on the readout the amp draw readout and we'll run each of these cars in order and you can see uh, what the amp draw actually is alright here we go with car number one a standard hopped up older Mega G Car number two, the newer Mega G, Mega G Plus, with uh, just uh, hopped up tires and front axle. see compared to the first Mega G, uh, the first one was drawing about an amp, this one here not much more than about a third, so you can run 
the newer one with mild hop-ups with the factory power supply and probably not much of a penalty. Alright, car number three, newer Mega G, stronger magnets, better gear set and tires. Alright, about a fourth of an amp. So if you're running by yourself with that car with a half an amp power supply, uh, the car would run fine. You would run into problems if you had two of those kinds of cars on the track where each one of them is trying to draw a third to a fourth of an amp and the power supply is only putting out you know, a half an amp, maybe six, seven tenths of an amp. All right, we're going to go to the uh, Viper car, the detuned Viper car. This one here is set in high down force. This is the hard body car. good. That one drew about a half an amp. This is the open wheel detuned Viper set in low down force with the Indy body. So this draw on a solid half an amp, which would tax most any standard power supply. So if you had two of these cars on the track, you'd have a lot of problems in running both of them effectively. All right, next one is car number five. This is the Lifelike T chassis. slots. Alright, so you can see on the T car, once you lower it down, since it does have very strong magnets, it's drawn about an amp and a third, maybe an amp and a fourth. Um, when these cars have plenty of power and hard tires, they, they can get up and move, but they do need the power to uh, push them. Alright, next to the last car is a standard 6 ohm level 4 Viper. That car is plenty fast, easy to drive. As you can see, it was pulling pretty steady uh, right at about one amp. Um, most, most of your factory power packs would have a problem pushing a car like that to its full potential. 
Uh, certainly, if you had two of them on the track, it would be a real problem. All right, the last car is going to be a 2.8 level 10 car. As you can see on that car, it had a peak of two amps, and that was generally in a tight corner where the car has to pull a lot of amps to maintain the speed to get through the turn. So as you go up uh, in power, or in this case, you lower the ohm rating of the armature and increase the uh, strength of the magnets to keep the car on the track, you have a higher amp draw. So that's why it's important to have a power supply that has enough amperage and certainly enough base voltage to deliver what the cars require. I mean they're they're drawing what they're going to draw and with the higher powered cars if you're running a cheap uh, wall wart uh, and it goes to grab amps and it can't get it it's going to pull the voltage down to try to get that to happen. All right, to wrap things up, um, earlier we took all these cars and ran them on the Scorpion, which is a 62-foot track. It's a wizard track. It's a very nice track. Plenty of power. And the object was to set some baseline speeds for all these cars so you can kind of gather what, what kind of raw speed these things can do on a very large open track. The number one car, the older Mega G, it hot lapped about 3.37 seconds. The number two Mega G was about 4.07 or our four second car. The third Mega G, it was about 3.37 seven six seconds on a hot lap um, and it can do that because it, it does have the stronger traction magnets in, in the Viper gear set so you're going to get more speed out of it. Um, the detuned Viper and high downforce it ran a 3.4 so that car and this car are essentially about the same in terms of track speed and that indeed that was the point of the exercise to see if we could take a Viper and detune it to equal the speed of an older hopped up Mega G. Um, the detuned Viper in low down force that was a nice fast car at about 3.26 seconds and that would indeed be the case because you do have a lighter body a lower center of gravity. Uh, the lifelike car is a bit of a pig at 3.8, oddly enough. Um, the T cars actually have a fairly uh, hot motor in them and a, and a uh, high downforce package in them uh, simply because that car is designed to run on a lifelike track and be very easy for people to drive without having to do much work. Um, the lifelike transformer I think may only be a half an amp unit so that may have been demonstrated in the first video where you saw that the cars ran okay but they weren't real fast but when you put unlimited amperage to them they get to be a bit of a handful the motor, in my opinion the torque curve of the motor is not very good they kinda lay there a little bit and then as soon as you get some power to them they just rock it off so that could probably be stand to be redesigned, not that they're ever going to do that, but that would probably help that is to have that car remotored. The 6 ohm Viper car ran about 2.95. That's fairly typical for a car like that. On that track, they run anywhere from 3.1 
down into the the two sevens depending on how you got the car set up or exactly which specific armatures in the car but that was a pretty good average speed for that uh, and then the three ohm car um, ran 2.35 seconds on a hot lap and that's I think fairly amazing for a a car that doesn't have a whole lot of uh, esoteric hopped up parts. I mean it's all standard uh, stuff out of the out of the parts bin. No special tires, no special armature or anything. Just it's a all box stock configuration. I mean you can take these cars and put custom armatures in them and better tires and you might squeak another two tenths out of them but uh, you almost double the money to do that. So that wraps it up for the Power Hack series. Any of you got any questions, you can contact me directly. Hopefully this will give you some information that will help you make the most out of uh, the equipment and the cars that you have uh, and increase your enjoyment and possibly reduce your frustration. Thanks for watching.